you for being here and for giving me the time to speak. It's a delight to be back at another gathering for Gardner. And it's especially nice to follow Jim, become a dear friend. What I want to talk about is a mathematical tiling called a Truchet tiling that we've had a lot of fun with at the And this tiling was first designed by Sebastian Truchet back in the early 1700s. Interesting thing about Truchet is that he's also the creator of the point system that we still use today to measure the size of bonds. But in this tiling, it was a square tiling, and the square is basically broken into two triangles. You can see one is white and one is black. There's four different orientations, so you can make a lot of really neat designs. But nobody really paid too much attention to this until a scientist named Cyril Smith got involved. Now, Smith was actually known as a scientist at Los Alamos who worked on the Manhattan Project. But as a little side interest, he developed a variation of the Truchet tiling that just involved two circular arcs at opposite corners of the square. And he played with those a little bit as part of studying crystallography and the structure of crystals. But now we jump a few years further uh, to a fellow named David Ryman, who decided to color those tiles. Here's an example of a coloring in blue and red. You'll see why in a few minutes. But you can see we end up then with two tiles. One of them has red circles in the corner. The other has blue circles in the corner. And you can already start to see that as you put those together, you get a very lovely curving design. David Ryman also came up with another idea. If you look at the tiling on the right side, at first it might look like a random truchet tiling. But if you look more carefully, you can see the numbers 2009. And that's the year that Dave Ryman presented a paper on this at the Bridges Conference. Now, when we started designing the museum, George Hart, who had seen that paper, thought it would be really neat to make tilings like this on the bathroom walls. And so all four tilings, uh, all four bathrooms have these tilings. Come in and see if you can read the hidden messages. I don't know if you can read them all from where you are, so I'll tell you the one on the left says, figure it out. The one on the right says, math is cool. And what I love about these tilings is that when we tell visitors that there are messages hidden in the tiles in the bathrooms, they usually don't see it right away. It takes them a moment. They look, they stare, they turn their head this way and that way. And suddenly, the light goes on, and they see the message, and they're really delighted. And I think that's very much akin to the experience that a mathematician may have in working on a tough problem and suddenly having some insight. We're trying to solve a puzzle. We've got a lot of puzzlers here, and not being able to do it, and suddenly having that aha moment. And so I love that even in the bathrooms of the museum, people can have that experience. So people have so much fun with this. We were doing a fundraiser that was right before the 2016 election. It was actually an election-themed gala. We had Nate Silver giving his mathematical expertise on what was about to happen. Um, we won't talk further about that. But um, what we did was we had over 200 people putting together this tiling piece by piece. You can see that in the bottom right. And you can't actually read the message until the whole thing is put together. But when it was, we got a chuckle out of telling people, well, we're going to tell you who to vote for. And if you lean to the left, literally as well as figuratively, you will see who to vote for in blue. However, if you lean to the right, you will see who to vote for in red. For those of you who may not be able to see it, um, they both say vote for Mona. So uh, we had so much fun with that that we decided to take it out to the public. And so we made another tiling that we took out to Broadway. And this was for a winter solstice celebration. And again, we had people you can see on the left putting in tile by tile. And at the end, there was a very lovely tiling. It stayed out on the streets for a while. And it said, happy solstice 2016. I do have a prize for the first person who comes up to me at the break, tells me what G4G attendee who's in this room right now is also in one of the pictures. So um, what I held up is actually something we call Tetra Truchet. People really were having fun with this tiling, so we decided to make a take-home version. You can see that there are design cards at the top. Those are the targets that people are trying to create by using these black and white Truchet tiles. And once we saw how much fun people were having with that, we thought it's always more fun to make something large. And so we actually put the same tiling on cubes, and you can see kids having fun. We've used these cubes quite a bit in the museum and programs, but we've also taken them out to festivals all over the city. So at this point, it's fair to say that thousands of 
thousands of people have played with the Suchet tiling. So thanks to David Ryman and to George Hart, we've had a lot of people see this. I would like to close by inviting everybody in this room to visit the National Museum of Mathematics free. In your gift bag, you'll have a coupon so you can do that. And I have one final message embedded in the bottom in a Truchet tiling. This tiling actually is a Truchet font created by Eric and Marty Domain. And the message hidden inside is my message to both of them as well as to all of you. And that is thank you.